you know, I, again, welcome back to a brand new video, the Target Individual Program. Target Good Experience. So, as a man, I think as a black man, you know, when it comes to interaction within black women, even the black women in our lives, and how they don't listen at all, even the mothers of our children, when we try to give them good advice, how they don't follow, how they choose to do whatever it is that they're going to do, and don't listen, and the outcome end up being detrimental to themselves and to also our kids, right? So, I, I, I mean, you ask me this video all the time. I keep telling the, you know Pam, stop doing these kids here late at night. Yesterday, Sunday, um, you know, I said to her at four o'clock, I said, Hey, you should, you know, start doing a list of hair now, like, you know, washing her hair and stuff like that. Oh, I'm not ready yet, I'm gonna do you know, what have you. Again, go back into her bedroom, whatever she's doing in there, what have you. Uh, don't even worry about feeding the kids dinner. Okay? So she comes until I have to go and say, Hey, what happened? What are the kids eating? You know, and this was like around seven o'clock. Oh, I know, I know. I, I'm just looking at a video I have and such. You know, eight o'clock. I, I reminded her, "Hey Pam, let's get." Oh well, you know, I, I gotta go out to get them something to eat. Comes back, kids eat. Come back around minutes to nine, kids are eating. Uh, told my son to go bit take a bath, and then I left because I was not going to stay there again and and have a feeling. Well, you know, maybe I should stay to have you. I'm not doing that particularly when I keep saying the same thing over and over, and I'm giving you good advice. I'm not telling you anything that's going to be detrimental to you or our children, right? But she chooses to do whatever she wants to do. So anyway, got back in, got, got home, called her 12, 30, I'm sorry, called her 11.30 to see how far she reached with in terms of um, finishing Alyssa's here. And she was like, oh, you know, um, I, I'm halfway done, right? This is at 11.30. Anyhow. She calls me around 2 o'clock. You know, I was going to go do laundry until I call her back. I just called her back. She, she sent me a text saying that, you know, they're all home today. Mind you, now my son has summer school that he needs to pass. Okay? So I, call, I just call her back, and I'm like, ask what time she go to bed. She, I was like, what time you finish the, the kids here? Uh, this is here. Oh, it wasn't late. I mean, how wasn't it? What you talking about? It wasn't late. I, I said to her, I called you at 1130. You was halfway done. So what do you mean? Um, you didn't finish her hair late. Anytime after their bedtime is late. You know, she's like, well, you know, as I said, what time? She didn't want to tell me. Of course she didn't want to tell me. Right? <laughs> so then, um, uh, uh, she said to me, well, you know, they, they chose to stop to stay up till three o'clock. I said, yeah, because you have them up late. And on top of that, you let them sleep until three o'clock. To wake them up because you couldn't be bothered. You want to take care of them because you want to do what you you want to do. Yes, you will clean up a little bit, but the only reason why she was cleaning because you know she got a new friend now. So she's you know all of a sudden again. I noticed that that whenever she she's on the phone with her friends or somebody new, what have you, you know she gets up and all of a sudden she wants to clean, but she doesn't really clean. Right? She just do a little tidying up and then that's it. You know, and I'm just like, wow, wow. You know, and then it's like, oh, well, you know, listen, it, it, you know, they chose it, this and that. And I said, I said, Pamela, you never see how you play, the, what you do contribute to them being late for school in the morning, right? To them being up late. Because if you are letting them sleep till three or four o'clock on a Sunday afternoon, knowing that they have school on Monday, and then you're doing it here at nine o'clock at night, and you're not finishing till after 12, even one o'clock, Right? And they're still up when if they go to bed at 9 30 that they're supposed to even if they're up for half an hour they fall asleep afterwards but she doesn't see it all she sees is what they do and she doesn't see nothing that she does that contributed to to, to even her getting up late and not being able to go to work i mean this is what i've dealt with for years and years and years and as a ti you know, them sending her honey traps, manipulating her, and she's just all about the excitement and forget about them kids. You know, leaving the kids by themselves all day, all night. Right? And this didn't went on for a week or two. This went on for at least two years. Okay? And then want to wonder why our daughter, when she's not there, she caused such a mess. And I'm like, you're a nurse. You take psychology. 
you watch the little Abbott experiment. You 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 watch the experiment in where uh, parents leave their kids into teaching their kids independent at a young age to where some parents will leave their kids by themselves and the kids will literally cry a ball or, or tear up their their house when they're not. It's like with dogs, right? We see this with dogs, right? Sometimes do some dogs, when their owners leave, they tear up their apartment or their house. Why? Because these they have abandonment issues. And we don't see how we continue to uh, 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 pass those things on to our children because we want to have our fun. Right? And it's not to say that she didn't have fun when her young age because she did. But I keep telling her, you are, what you are doing is the same thing that your mother did to you. It's the way you have to take care of your younger brother. But except our kids age are reverse. Our son is older. Our list is younger. So you may feel you may have missed out on some of your fun. But that's in your teenage years. You were an, As an adult, you didn't have to do that. Right? You went out, you did all, you know, all the stuff and such and such. But because women today, particularly black women today, nigger people women, I should say, are being manipulated, right, through what is called cognitive warfare. And they've, been, they've done it to us black men too. Okay, but they did it to us first. And so when we get to our age that we are right now, we understand because we learn, we, we understand what's going on. We see what it is that they were, we see how they were experimenting on us as a group. And now they're doing it to women. So now black women have become so masculine that these cops are shooting them. Why? Because they don't see you as a woman anymore. They see you as a man that looks like a woman. So they can shoot you in the face. They can assault you on the ground. Even your teenage daughters. Right? They can literally punch you and, and you know, these are, these are white racist men on the police department. And even the black ones too. The black sambos. When you see a six foot five police officer punching a a five foot two 120 pound black woman right and nobody no other black police or no other black fucking sambo on the New York Prater department does anything don't pull him to the side and say hey man what the hell are you doing right if these motherfuckers are that scared if they got pussy instead of instead of balls then they shouldn't be on the police force I can understand the white supremacists because they got a job to do, which is to destroy black men and destroy black people in general. But you black sambos on the police department, you love white Jesus so much that you're following these motherfuckers, these racist motherfuckers. Hmm? Y'all need to check yourself. Check your mindset. Be more understanding of the people in the community that you grew up in because you experienced it also when you're young. So when these cops see you in, in, in public, you know, in, in your... Every day you uh, clothing and they beat your asses. Don't fucking cry racism. Okay? Don't cry racism because you, when you're in that uniform, you're just as racist as they are. You're going to have to make a choice. Either you're going to stand up and put a stop to this in the capacity that you have as police officers and even those that have in departments that have black police chief, black police commanders engage in the same destructive Mindset against their very own people. You're going to make after have, have a stand because you know I guarantee you. When your child, when your son, your daughter meet one of these racist white pig or these sambo black bastards, and they assault them or even kill them, don't fucking cry racism, and fuck you. Talk to you guys in the next video.